What's up, everybody? How you doing? I was just sitting here thinking, what are y'all crazy people doing sitting there waiting? It tells me actually when I click on the, uh, <laughs> when I click on the, uh, uh, you can set up a YouTube live in advance. I guess that's how y'all get the notification. It tells me how many people are waiting uh, when I click on it uh, before I hit the go live button. So I was just sitting here laughing to myself thinking, what are y'all crazy people doing sitting here waiting <laughs> on me to go live? So, uh, anyway, hope you, I hope you guys are doing well. Uh, welcome. Anyway, so what, uh, what we're going to work on today is, uh, I've got some, uh, the bases for some two part vases that we're going to put together. And uh, I've actually uh, done a video on this um, quite a while back, uh, but it wasn't uh, the same. Well, it was just different shape that I did for the bottom. And I'm going to play around with some different shaped uh, bottoms that I have here and put some different shapes on top. Uh, I don't necessarily have one specific design I'm going for other than I made a lot of different shapes of the bases that I'm going to put tops on. So here's an example of one that I made the other day. So what this was, this was a, uh, a three pound base here, a three pound bottom that was made uh, kind of like here up to here. And then what I did uh, after this one stiffened up, I did it the same day on this one, uh, but then I made a bunch of bases yesterday that I'm gonna put, put tops on. But uh, this one was made, like I said, up to here. And then I took another piece of clay, kind of like I do when I make large sectional pots. I just threw another piece and added to the top, but this was already stiffened up quite a bit, so that I didn't have to worry about this slumping at all. So I won't be using a torch at all today um, that I know of, but uh, I've got the bases. Uh, I've got, I think, like nine of these uh, bottoms that I've already made, uh, that I made yesterday, that I'm gonna be putting tops on of a very, very diff various different shapes for the tops. Um, and then maybe we'll put some handles on or something like that later. But uh, anyway, just thought I'd show you guys kind of the idea of, of what we're working on. They're not all, like I said, gonna be the same shape on top as that one, but uh, that's kind of the idea there. So, um, alrighty. Well, first thing we're gonna do is take the first base. So, like I said, you can see that one there's a lot different shape than, than the bottom of that one. But what I'm gonna do is take my calipers and measure this. And in measuring this, you guys can see what I'll do is I'll measure inside and I'm actually gonna come in a little bit from the actual rim. I don't wanna go tight up to the edge because I'll show you, I'm gonna make the, the top so that it has a real wide and it's gonna go over each side of the, my goal is for the, the top of what I make when I flip it over to kind of go over the top uh, and around each side of this. So I wanna kind of come in a little bit from the, each side on that. So I've got the caliper set. And then, uh, like I said, all these bases that I'm working with are all three pounds. And I've got one, one and a half pound clay balls here that I'm actually going to be making uh, those with. So we'll tilt this down so you guys can see the wheel. You don't need to see my face anyways, right? Anyway, how are you guys doing before I get started, uh, before I start throwing? How's everybody doing today? Good, good, good. Welcome. <laughs> New Zealand, right? Is it like, you know, I don't know how, what time of day it is there. <laughs> Alabama, what's up? How are you doing? Welcome, welcome. Got your wheel fixed. All right. Good deal. That's exciting for sure. I tell you, I, I uh, my second wheel that you guys have seen, uh, <laughs> it was almost midday. <laughs> Strange, huh? Yeah. Um, Brazil, hey there, welcome. That is awesome. I don't speak any Portuguese, so <laughs> hopefully you speak English. <laughs> I speak a little bit of Spanish, but not enough. 
But uh, anyway, the, the second wheel that I have, my stand-up wheel over here, I bought it uh, last year. Uh, and I bought it untested, but it was a used wheel. And when I got it home, I realized it didn't work. Um, so thankfully, it only cost me like $60 plus shipping to get the Laguna in California to fix the pedal. So that was a, that was a blessing. But uh, yeah, having a wheel that's not working is no fun. But uh, anyway, got my coffee here today. And oh, oh good. I'm glad that you understand the English because <laughs> even my Spanish is shaky. <laughs> Thank you, Richard. Appreciate it. Um, drinking my coffee today out of a Ron Philbeck coffee mug. I got this at the last show I was at. Got to hang out with Ron uh, Friday night after the show and then Saturday during the day. And we did a little barter. I got a coffee mug and he got one of my cereal bowls. So um, I love uh, I love getting mugs and pieces from other potters. So. Um, yeah, somebody asked me in, uh, in a comment on my last video, which I'll probably respond to them directly, but they asked me what, uh, what potters on YouTube inspired me. And uh, I'd, say, I'd say actually more so than anything on YouTube, I get inspired by the actual pieces that I own or pieces that I see more than I do from actual videos. I don't really, it's funny, I, I, I actually do spend quite a bit of time on YouTube, but hardly any of it's pottery related. Uh, because it's usually while I'm making pottery and I can't, you know, it's more, uh, you know, either podcasts or, or, or intellectual stuff, um, which that does definitely inspire me as well. Hello from Holland. Hey there. How are you doing? <laughs> but uh, I, I'd say just seeing other people's work, kind of like what I mentioned at the last at the end of my last vlog, seeing other people's work if it's done well. That inspires me like crazy because I love seeing other people's work and I, I, know, I don't really have a desire to copy other people's work either. It's not that. It's just that I, I love seeing people that do amazing things and, and especially if it's different from what I do because, I mean, everybody just sees this world and, and all the, the clay that we touch. Everybody sees it a different way and has a different way of interacting with it. And um, now, of course, there are times that I see stuff that people ooh and ah over and I'm like, yeah, I don't see it, but that's okay too. But uh, there are um, certain types of work and certain people that I follow on Instagram or, or whatever that uh, I love seeing their work. So anyway, we're going to get started now. But um, anyway, thank you guys for, for joining. And uh, um, so like I said, we're going to take three pound bottoms. Any of, you, any of you who just got here, we're taking some bases that I made like this yesterday and I've got all different shapes of these and we're going to be throwing tops to put on them uh, and then these have been stiffened up quite a bit they're leather hard down at the bottom is still a little soft but up here it's 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 really past leather hard it's more um, getting on the drier side but not but not kind of really drying out yet but we're going to take pound and a half clay balls and throw tops for those and uh, and put them on New Jersey, how you doing? Did I say Donna, I believe? Sorry, the phone's a little bit farther away. So I'm pretty much gonna focus on just throwing like straight cylinders with these uh, pieces. Um, of course, no, no bottom in them. I'm going all the way down to the bat. And then I'm gonna pull these up and I'm gonna leave quite a bit of thickness at the top so that I can flatten that out and make that so it will fold over the rim, the top rim of, of uh... Hey Eva from Sweden, welcome. I'm realizing now that I might not have, uh, I might want a little bit more clay in some of these tops than just a pound and a half, but I've got more clay plugged out that I can cut up. But uh, first one we'll do a pound and a half and we'll see, uh, see what we get out of it. Something's making a whole bunch of more noise than normal down here, but I don't think there's anything under there. I 
saw a question, I think. Let me look and see what that was. Wisconsin greetings. Uh, why don't you make them in one part since they're small? Uh, yeah, the, the benefit uh, uh, of making them in two pieces, uh, number one, um, some of these, the shape that I'm doing, it's, 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 a, it's definitely more difficult um, to do because of the, uh, the shoulder that I put on a lot of these is really sharp. And then adding clay, I can get a lot more height in, in the top. Um, uh, it's just it's a way to, to make them a little bit lighter, not have to work with such, a, such stiff clay. Uh, I could definitely make some of these shapes uh, all in one piece because they're not that big. Uh, but also, I don't like to I don't like to stress out my arms and my hands by using really stiff clay um, all the time because it just you know it's really it's really strenuous on your body to do that, and it's just not something I'm really interested in doing. Uh, wearing my body out just for the sake of making a pot that's lighter or better shape when there are other ways to do that Hopefully that helps or makes sense All right, so I'm gonna put these put, put one of these back on the wheel here and then I'm gonna just add a little bit of water just to the top here just to Just add a little bit of water to that and then I'm gonna take this, where you can see I've made that kind of indention all the way around. I'm gonna flip this over and set it on that. And if I've measured correctly, I can kind of get that to go inside and out and kind of get it, get it on there like that. I need my wire. Thank you, Donna. I've, I've been doing this long enough that I try to figure out ways to make it easier on my body because I'd like to do this a really long time. I enjoy it and I don't want to wear myself out. times as you can see when I first put this top piece on it can be a little off from being centered but with the bottom already being dry I can add a good amount of water to this top piece and I can really uh, kind of center this up cut off any that's out that's off that's off kilter um, or just center it up depending on how, how, how bad it's off um, I uh, made the bottoms yesterday, um, probably middle of the day uh, or afternoon, but uh, last night I covered them, and I, uh, late last night I covered them with plastic, and they've been covered all day today because they were, they were really ready to do last night about midnight or 1 o'clock in the morning, but I, I finished up out here in my studio about 1 or 1.30, and I was too tired to, to go at it then, so... I'm gonna work on making a, a like a gourd base. So I'm actually gonna come in here at the top of this uh, a little bit, and then go back out, and then come back in with a really small top on it. Successfully, but I I see the, sh the, the shape of the uh, bottom is not quite what I wanted, so I'm going to open that back up. I 
and I didn't really want to have to do that, but uh, I wanted to get that a, a, a kind of a smooth shape in there. It had some kind of bumps in it. California. Hey there. One place I definitely want to visit. Southern California. Of course, I'd like to visit all kinds of places, so I don't really want to single out one place. Just about everywhere that you guys have mentioned you're from, I'd love to visit. My goal with these, even in making them two pieces though, is to make, make it look like it's one. So where I join these two pieces, I try to have a really smooth transition. Um, either that or I want to make it obvious that there's two pieces there, one or the other. I don't want to have it kind of like be in between. Like, well, it kind of looks like two pieces, but it looks like they tried to hide it. Um, I'd like to make it either look like one piece or make it obvious that it, it kind of looks like two pieces. So there, you know, basically we've taken four and a half pounds of clay and we've got, uh, you know, a pretty good sized piece out of four and a half pounds of clay with a really neat shape. You know, I've got um, 14 and three quarter inches in height. Um, with that shape out of four and a half pounds of clay is, is pretty good in my opinion. So like I said, I can get really light, uh, nice shaped pots uh, without, without uh, nearly as much stiffness of the clay. Like I said, and I made a bunch of different shapes. You'll see a bunch of different shapes of the bottoms here because I wanted to try different shapes of tops based on the shape of the bottom to get a uh, different look. So number two, you can see this one is definitely different. It's got kind of more like a lifted shoulder. That other one was just kind of like uh, oval uh, or just round. This one's definitely got a, a higher shoulder and kind of a straight uh, portion down here. So we're going to like I said, measure this one like we did the last one. And then, uh, and then we'll make the, the top for it. Let me look at comments real quick. I wish I could figure out how on my phone to keep the comments up. Either way, it's all good. Thank you, Donna. Thank you, Richard. Here, I'll bring you guys in closer so that you can see uh, as I make this one. Thank you, thank you. thickness up here so I can flatten that out and make an indention in it to fold over the rim of the bottom. I 
kind of like that. I just push my finger down into that and to make that a little bit wider. Right there. I'm gonna pull this a little bit more down at the base of it. There we go. Another thing that I do with I'm um, making these is I go ahead and I kind of clean up around the inside of the bottom. I usually have to do that with a screwdriver just to clean up. Otherwise that extra, when I cut it off, when I flip this over and cut it off, I have all, a whole bunch of extra clay on the rim that I may not need. And rather than trying to clean that off after I flip it over, it's still gonna be thicker than, than a normal piece that you would pull that height. Anyway, so if I cut that extra off, it just kind of saves a little bit of trouble of cleaning that up after I flip it over. As you guys have probably noticed, when I'm done throwing, I, I, I try to keep the bats clean, clean up around the bottom of the pot. I think overall it just makes, a, makes the process a whole lot easier. I also have... Uh, I also have an X on my wheel next to one of my bat pins. The reason I do that is because when I threw the bottoms, do you have an idea of the shape of the second piece before you throw it? Um, I, I kind of, I had some ideas based on, on the shapes of the bottoms that I made, what kind of tops I was going to put on. At least I did yesterday. Um, today, I, I don't know. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just kind of winging it, just kind of going with what, what I think looks good. And uh, I'll adjust them as I go. But uh, like I said, I have an X scratched into my wheel head on one of my bat pins. And when I made the bottoms, after I got done throwing it, I would put a little bit of extra clay next to that hole where the scratch was so that when I put this bat back on the wheel, it will be in the same position it was when I took it off. I did that with most of them. Some of them I might have missed. The reason I do that is because I know the bat pins are centered with the wheel. But this bat, the way it was made, these these holes might be a little off center. So if I go to put this here, actually, I'll, I'll put this on backwards from the way I intended it to do. And if I spin that, it's still pretty centered, but it's a, it's it could be a little bit off. So to just have a better chance of actually having the, the, the base, the bottom be more centered by putting it back on the same way it came off. Yeah, it looks about the same, but uh, I'm sure I have some bats that the uh, that the that the holes are drilled a little off center, and uh, and that would make it harder in the long run. So you can see there, I've uh, wet the top of that. Come back up. Uh, for these, I do because um, because I've stiffened this up so much. I need a better way to attach the wet clay to the dry clay. I definitely, I make that indention in here so that it can fold kind of like over the rim like this. It can kind of go inside and outside. And I, I don't know that that I learned that from anywhere. I can't remember if, if somebody taught me that. Um, I mean, I've known people that did this style of, of making two-piece pots. Um, but uh, I can't remember if somebody taught me that or I just thought, okay, that's, that'd be the way to do it. You can see the thickness of this is a lot thicker than, it, than just a pot. You would probably pull that height. So I'm not worried about having enough clay up there. But having that extra that I cleaned off, you know, cleaning that off definitely helps smooth this up when I get to this point. Then I usually add a little bit of water right under this section here, and then I actually push this clay down, so I'm kind of uh, smoothing that out, trying not to trap any air underneath there. Every once in a while, I still trap a little bit of air. Uh, you can just pop that bubble and, and smooth it out. But if I can kind of smooth that down like that, connect it, and then I'm gonna go on the inside and try to smush, uh, smooth that part down over while kind of supporting it on the outside. And I got a little bit of a wobble there, just like the last one, but I can... Now, because of how stiff the bottom is, I can actually just, like I said, add water to the top, and I can just kind of comb that in and not worry about this figure in the bottom or, or throwing it off center while working on this top piece.
not off much, but I'm gonna go ahead and cut that off so I don't have to deal with that as much as I pull this. So this one I'm thinking about making a real tall skinny neck on. We'll see. Sometimes I, I do a little bit of a shape and then I either just lean back and look at it and see, see what I think of it. Like I said earlier, one of the things I want to do is if I'm trying to make it look like it's one piece, I really want to work on this transition between the two. Of course, that starts when you're making the bottom piece. If you got an idea of what you want to do with the second piece, you can kind of work on that transition and kind of make it so that if you got an idea of where you're going to go with the neck, you can work uh, on how to end the bottom piece so that you can transition into the top piece even as you're throwing the bottom that might be a little extreme I don't know <laughs> I might have to step back and look at that and see if I even like it that's a gooseneck, that's what that is. I definitely on this one have more clay here than I need. But uh, I'm not too much worried about the weight because of the way I'm making this, like I said, um, I'm not, uh, it's not going to feel heavy because making these in two pieces like this um, makes them feel lighter anyway. I'd rather have too much clay here than not enough because nothing worse than getting to the top of a vase and not having enough clay to finish the shape the way you want. To me, that's just a horrible feeling. Um, doing all that work and getting to the top and being like, man, if I had like an extra pound of clay up here, I could really finish this shape the way I want. It's definitely exaggerated, but uh, I don't know. I think we'll play around with it. We'll leave it and, and uh, look at it later, see if I think it needs handles or anything of the else. Hey, let me move this one before I try to look. Hey Jim, you're so welcome. I'm glad uh, glad you're here and glad the videos are helping. Teaching how to center. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the fun of potters in the playtime. Teaching how to center. That's definitely. Um, I'm not sure how well that uh, can work. Sorry, I'm just gonna move the camera over here to this side. Maybe that'll help you guys see on this side. Um, teaching how to center. Um, on YouTube, I guess uh, I definitely could could work on that, and I might even could 
we'll talk about it in this next uh, next base or next top I'm gonna make. All right, so here's the next base that I'm I'm gonna work on. You can see there, it's uh, I've kind of a, just a rounded version, or uh, definitely a fatter version of what we just worked with. No, I've never had any cracking or any failures in that set in that joining. Um, you know, if, if you were careless with putting those together and you trapped some air, um, you know, that would definitely be a problem. Or if you, I think because I'm adding uh, freshly thrown, you know, wet clay, I think they join really well because at least one of the two pieces is really wet. Um, and I think that helps soften that, uh, the clay that you're joining it to. Um, the top of this next one is a lot smaller than the last one. So, you know, we've got a... a a really small joint that we're going to be making for that one where it's going to be the openings, you know, like I said, only about three and a half inches wide or so. Um, but, uh, yeah, I've never had any problem with these joining this way. Um, if, if I did, I guess I probably would have changed the way I do it. But uh, as far as centering, um, one of the things you can do is, that will help you, especially beginning, is to get your clay balls in a round form. These definitely are not, but that, I'm not too worried about, uh, you know, try, being able to center a pound and a half of clay. Uh, it's not really worth the time of me trying to round all these before I throw them on the wheel uh, when I don't have to. Uh, I will say this, if you're using a pug mill, uh, here's one thing that you need to do. Um, this will probably actually be in a future video of like tips and tricks. Uh, you can see these actually were like a, came out of my pug mill like this. It was a four inch round pug. Uh, the reason I cut them like this, and, and it won't matter so much with throwing these, these tops because there's not a bottom in them, uh, but if you were to take and make a, a bowl or a plate or anything, and you were to take the clay that came out of the pug mill like this, and then just throw it down on the wheel like this right here, uh, you more times than not will get S cracks in the bottom of your pot. I don't care. Uh, I've, I've seen people try to you know, compress the bottom like crazy, but throwing the clay ball down like this is something about the way the particles are aligned with a pug mill and the way it comes out that you want to take that clay and then throw it on the wheel, kind of like the way it comes out horizontal, throw it on the wheel that way to help keep uh, from, from getting those S cracks in the bottom. Uh, I've had several people ask about that and I've, I've tried it both ways myself on, on the same pots and seen the results to where one, one cracks and the other one doesn't. So, uh, I would say for centering, one of the best things to do is, is, is what you're wanting to do is keep your, keep your arms either, either tucked in next to your body or, or braced on something. Like right now, I've got this arm braced on my leg. This one's kind of like on my leg in the splash pan. Um, and I don't necessarily cone up and down. A lot of people do that, but I'm just using that pressure uh, of, uh, and stability of bracing on my arms and my, uh, my, I'm bracing my arms on my legs in the splash band as a way to keep them steady and force that clay into the center of the wheel. You know, of course you can, as, as you're doing it, you can feel it, but also if you need to, you can stop, take your hands off and hold your hand up close to it and see if it's running, you know, if it's, if it's still wobbling from side to side, you haven't got there yet. So there's the, there's the two minute tutorial. <laughs> I think one of the biggest things to do as far as learning to center is to have somebody that knows how to center, watch you try to center. And one of the things I've done with my kids and some other people is actually have them put their hands on the clay ball. I put my hands over top of theirs and then push it towards the center so they can feel what kind of pressure and, and, and the, uh, uh, that you need to actually push the clay ball to, to the center of the wheel.
All right, so there's another top. All right, gonna find that X on my wheel right there. I've got the clay on the corner of the bat where I took that off and where that X was when I took that off. Still, still pretty good and centered and I'm gonna, like I said, add just a little bit of water just to that top portion, just to soften it a little bit. And then flip this over on top. Thing. What shape am I going to do? I haven't been thinking about it. I've been talking. I definitely need to go in with it down here at the bottom because of the, the way the, the top of the, the, the base comes in right here. I want to kind of follow that line. And after adding a little bit of water to it, it's still, yeah, I can actually make this a little bit pliable sometimes. It's, it's stiff enough to hold all that weight, but uh, still uh, dry enough or still wet enough, especially after I add a little bit of water that I can make it pliable. I love flipping those over too because then I've got this real thick amount of clay up here at the top that I can uh, leave that on the top even after I make a really nice shape on top. I've got a, a good thickness of clay there to leave. A lot of times I'm not going for a, a, a necessarily a specific shape as much as I am getting a fluid shape of, of whatever I do end up with. I want, you know, I want, if I've got a curve there, I want that to be a, a nice continual curve uh, without any kind of breaks or hips or in it. So I definitely could have gotten more out of the top of that one based on how much clay was there, but I think that's good.
on to number four. All right, here we got a really nice uh, fat bottom on this one, just really round. A um, little bit wider opening here, but uh, not much wider than the last one, but definitely a lot, uh, a lot wider base to that. So, yeah, we'll see what we come up with here. All of these three pounds on the bottom. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. These are all three pounds on the bottom and a pound and a half in the top. Yep. Like I said, each one I measure the, the width of the inside of this. I measure and come in a little bit from each side so that as I um, as I make that as I make the top of the uh, of what I'm throwing here, as I make it and I kind of indent it and flare it out, I make like a valley so that it will fold over that rim on each side of the, the top of the piece that I that I'm gonna be setting this on. Yeah, a couple of those in the picture for the uh, for the live stream. A couple of those were uh, were six pound bottoms with like a two to uh, I think like a two pound top on those. Um, I'll show you guys those here in just a minute because it I've got uh, nine total of these bases, the three pound bases that I'll be working with, uh, but I've only had four of them sitting here next to my wheel. So in a minute when I get up to get more of those, I'll take you guys over there and show you show you those. All right. I'm actually gonna uh, get my other tripod for a second. Figured out, lower you guys down, you can see it from down here rather than looking down on it the whole time. All right, let's see. There you go. You give you guys a different angle. the best let me move you over here my arm will be in the way a whole lot if you're at that angle there we go
All right. I think we're back. Hey, Lisa, how are you doing? I think I trapped some air in that one. See, it does happen. But uh, definitely. Sorry, I don't know what the issue is with the internet, but. Uh... Apparently my phone's having issues staying connected. My Wi-Fi from my house doesn't reach all the way out here, so I'm just on cell phone signal, but it's usually just...